<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pinterest Show. It has already started, by the way. <laughs> My name is Calibra Kelby, and since I'm already talking, I'll go ahead and tell you what chocolate I'm bringing so we can get on with this show. I have uh, these lovely fray or fry. I don't think we ever decided the first time I had these. It's Swish chocolate that the wonderful Klaus Bender sent me. And they are um, milk chocolate balls wrapped in blue paper. Oh. And uh, that's what I'll be having tonight for my taco. Oh my god, I just dropped a ball on the floor. <laughs> Maggie will get it. Moving right along. Okay. You guys go ahead and introduce yourself and talk about your chocolate. I'm going to go get those balls off the floor. Alan, go I ahead, you're Alan. first. Hi, I'm, I'm Alan Hess, um, and I don't have any chocolate. But there's a very, very good reason for that. I, don't look at me with the big wide eyes. Um, I'm actually <laughs> diabetic. diabetic. <laughs> I'm diabetic. Okay. I, <laughs> I don't eat chocolate anymore. I used to eat my own body weight in chocolate for many, many, many years. But um, turned out that wasn't the best idea with, with my genetics. Not. So uh, I actually so have cans of sugar-free mints, which I eat now uh, quite well. I try to do the natural ones. Um, well, hang on a so second. They have sugar-free chocolate. They do. And most of it is actually terrible. <laughs> if you've had real chocolate and you get some sugar-free stuff, it's worth <laughs> just like remembering the taste of good chocolate as opposed to eating <laughs> the stuff. Because it's made with sugar um, alcohol in it. And and it does really bad things to you. So, um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought that one. right. I thought it was a good solution at one point, and then I had a couple. <laughs> maybe I had a little too much. And, <laughs> had I known, Alan, I would have given you like special permission to bring some cheese or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, cheese is good. Popcorn is good. There's a lot of good stuff, but uh, okay. I'm going to stay away from this from the chocolate. Okay. Well, you know what, Alan, now that I've collected all the, well, there's still a ball up down there, but anyway, I've collected most of the balls off the floor. We're so psyched that you're here because, well, I don't know if people know this, but every once in a while, my husband and I play in a band at this little thing called Photoshop World Party, and um, we also do a pre-conference workshop with Alan. Uh, he teaches concert photography, and... Um, I have to say, it is a, a really wild experience for me as someone who, um, I know that I'm on stage, but I'm actually very camera shy. <laughs> so the pre-conference workshop is a really interesting time for me. But um, Alan has, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Alan, I think you, you shot us every single Photoshop world. Maybe you said you missed the first one or something, right? I, I've, since 2009, every time you've played, I've shot you twice both the pre-con and the regular conference. And I actually remember um, back in San Diego in 2002, I think was the debut of Big Electric Cat. And I actually saw that. I didn't shoot it because I was just an attendee kind of hanging out towards the back of the room. Um, yeah, but since 2009, I think I've shot you 14 times or something. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> way too much for anybody to have to do. I'm so sorry, Alan. Oh, it's, it's a blast. It's really interesting <laughs> because it's in, in, usually when I shoot, we try not to be noticed. We try to stay, you know, unobtrusive. But when you're standing in a giant room and the only people in the room are the musicians on stage and there's 40 photographers in front of the stage, being unobtrusive is impossible. So it's a little bit like... It pushes yeah. the band a little bit, and it, it actually kind of pushes a lot of my buttons, too, because you see things that are just cringeworthy most of the time. Um, but the setup is good, and we usually get a lot of really good feedback. We've gotten a lot of really great pictures from people um, you know, who yeah, have never done have. it before. Yeah, so. yeah. The, the class my, question, really my question is, how do, you, how do you deal with so many photographers in one small area? Uh, we actually have quite a large area. We use the um, Photoshop World Keynote stage, and um, the band is really good about spreading out. So they don't stay all clumped together in the middle and have everyone fight for them. They kind of realize that there's a lot of people, so everyone kind of spreads out to their little areas. And um, Actually, we I'm just running. I'm just running. <laughs> if I see somebody shooting, I'm running the other way, and they follow. That's the problem. <laughs> there's well, there's Alan, a... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just I was just going to say it, it's um, you know the, the credit goes to the band as well. They really know you know to kind of act up for the crowd as opposed to just kind of going through the motions, and it makes it you know a much better experience for all the attendees you know, as opposed to just kind of 
shooting a band who's standing there. Well, Anna, you are going to love all of the advice and the things that Alan's going to be able to share with everyone tonight about uh, ninja style concert <laughs> photography. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that I really like about Alan is that honestly, he always comes up with the shots that I love the, the most of me. And I never saw him. I'm like, where were you? This is awesome. So we're going to get to all that. But Anna, let's go ahead and let's get everybody introduced so we can we can get back to Alan and hear his stories. Yeah. Here. All right, everyone. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm wearing my rose tinted glasses. You are so cool. I see the world through the literal rose tinted glasses you know, in honor of Alan <laughs> and his rock and rollness. <laughs> anyway, I'm a photographer based in Florida, and you can find my work at on Google Plus. Or ZNF.com. Yay, Anna. All right, Mr. Jason Joseph. Hey, guys. I'm Jason Joseph. I'm a photographer in New York, and I have chocolate with me here, too. I've got um, more that... intense, lint, intense orange. Oh. I thought you hated that okay, Absolutely Jason. not. No. What We're happened? Not... No. Oh. <laughs> it went over the shoulder. <laughs> in the spirit of rock and roll, I threw Throw it over my shoulder. <laughs> I've got this stuff. Uh oh. All yeah, right, that sounds cool. better. I was going to say, you hated that orange stuff. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention my chocolate. I just want you to know I'm actually unwrapping this ball now because when I'll need to eat it, it'll be in this <laughs> wrapping and I won't get to it quick enough. So I'm going to. Yeah, I'm tearing this uh, I have, I have plenty of chocolate, Alan. I'll eat, I'll eat in your honor. How's that? That's good. I just <laughs> like dark chocolate because that's what I got. I hope everybody at home has their chocolate. By now, all of you at home should know, and Lenny, Lynn Hughes, should be making sure that everybody has their chocolate and has it ready. Now, there's a few people like Alan that we give well, we give them a little special permission, like Carolyn Palm. She's a blueberry person. That's fine. You just have to have something to play our pin it or spin it game, guys. And it's like a drinking game, except you're going to eat chocolate. <laughs> and I know I had some requests since this is our rock and roll show that it actually be a drinking <laughs> game, but we're not doing it, okay? Because but you want to take shots of us, you know, chocolate Baileys. <laughs> well, I have a question for Alan, though. Is it is it untrue? Then is it just rumors that Calibra steps in front of Scott in front every every chance when the that camera comes out? That, that, that is that is a rumor. She, she oh, doesn't no. step in front of Scott, but what she does do is she looks over to Scott. And a lot of people don't catch it, but, but when Calibra is not singing and she needs a little bit of support, her and Scott wow. look at each other, and it's it's those moments that are actually easier to capture and look better than when everyone is you know looking at her while the microphone is here. Because this is really good. I can sit like this all night. That look really cool. <laughs> you know. But that's what it looks like. A lot of times when you shoot a musician is singing, this is the look you get, and it's really annoying. You know. So. <laughs> and we do it on purpose. I, now remember, Calibra, make sure you don't put it like this. Make sure you put it like this so people can see. Yeah, like, what is it? Like, the kill shot now is sideways? Maybe we should be, like, singing like that. The what I'll, shot? I'll try that. You know how they turn the gun sideways in the movies now? Oh, yeah, the whole... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I could be, like, super cool no, like that no, next no. time, Alan. I'll right. try that, like, I'll be, like, all, like, mm-hmm. Because the guy whose bank you're robbing really cares how you properly <laughs> hold, hold your weapon. I know. But you want to hear something? I don't remember the name of the movie, and it was so long ago, but I remember the first guy that did that. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's he doing with that guy? Right? Like, he really means it. This guy really means it. He's like a super gun dude. It, did. it, worked. it worked the first time. Should I not be eating chocolate yet? <laughs> I don't know. I heard somebody say pin it. Oh, and by yes. the way, at I home, pin it? yeah, if you hear pin it, you got to eat your chocolate. Mm. Oh, I eat a double chocolate mm -hmm. for Alan. Um, I am going to have diabetes before the show is <laughs> over. <laughs> well, in all honesty, I, I, it, it was not just the chocolate. It was the fact that I weighed over 300 pounds for a while. So there was a couple of issues. Most of you don't know what I look like now, but Kleber knows. You know, I'm 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 down to like 220. I don't weigh 300 pounds anymore. Go to work Yay! for the. Please don't work say it was the chocolate. Go to work for the Kelbys. They'll work you till your skin and bone. <laughs> <laughs> get out there. Better get take pictures. What's that? I already offered my indenture indenture servant servitude, you know, to Scott. <laughs> 
My clean retired husband, I'll be his slave. <laughs> you know, Santana, I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, like mental good. bleach right now. <laughs> you know what? Okay, fact, I, I do have fact, to say Anna, you may <laughs> never be on this show again. <laughs> okay. Okay. So apparently Carolyn, one of our viewers, uh, cl uh you know, finally told me what what you know what I, you know, Anna not wearing pants, like I didn't know what it really meant. <laughs> she goes, apparently in the UK, me telling people I, I don't wear I'm not wearing any pants is like telling people I'm not wearing underwear. No, don't they call them knickers? I don't know. We gotta have somebody from the UK watching this thing. Aren't they knickers? But honestly, should I be saying knickers? You know, let's just move on, okay? We we've got Anna. Knickers. Don't no, not not my knickers. We're talking about your knickers. I'm talking. About, I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I'm so sorry. And I would say it's different from this usually, but it's not. No, I got it. Anyway, so what we're going to do, guys, is we'll head over and um, let's go ahead and take a look at um, at Alan's board, <laughs> his uh, concert target. I know you don't have all your stuff there, but we're going to go there anyway. Well, I, yeah, I, uh, I have a few boards because it's it's more organically growing than... So I mean, the problem I have is when I start actually going to look to pin things, I get so distracted by stuff, I forget to actually pin them to my boards. And three hours later, I'm like, oh, my God, those are really cool. Now, where'd they all go? <laughs> um, so I started to try to be actually better than that. Well, you know what, Alan, if you could just pick maybe, you know, some of your, your favorite um, shots that you have on there and, and just give us a little background. Um, I, I love, like, the stories you tell sometimes when you're talking about how you – you know, how you had to get it and different things when, you know, they're throwing paint all over the place. And, you know, right. it's just, it's also interesting about, I don't think most people know how long the photographers are, unless you're a concert photographer, are allowed to be there and shooting the, the bands and things like that. So it's, it's, it's really actually very interesting. Well, one of the, um, one of the boards I have is, I just call it my photos used around the web. Um, most of these are, are shots that have, I've taken that have been, you know, for clients that have ended up somewhere else and I have found them and repinned them and one of the big ones is that I'm the house photographer for the Valley View Casino Center which used to be the San Diego Sports Arena so it's really hard for me to call it the Valley View Casino Center because in my head it's still the San Diego Sports Arena and I think it sounds cooler as the San Diego <laughs> Sports Arena but yeah. <laughs> you know um, it was actually the building in the movie Almost Famous at the very very beginning it's the very first um, where the boy meets the girl on this ramp at this concert and if you've ever oh, seen the movie, that's, right. mm -hmm. um, that's the ramp I go down to work every time I go into the building. So it's, it's very cool because I always think of like, oh, my God, this is, you know, um, the Best building. job but, ever. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, wow. Um, so a lot of times you'll see that the, the pictures used around the web are a combination of either concert stuff or like press, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a shot of um, Sylvester Stallone that I really like that was, that was shot at, you know, Comic-Con. I do a lot of the press stuff of that. Um, so we stand in a room for like an hour and we wait and then the, the publicists like drag these people in front of us for like 30 seconds. We get to fire off as many pictures as we can trying to get a smile or a reaction and then they disappear again. Everyone's like, oh my God, you got to meet Sylvester Sloan. No, I got to see him from about <laughs> seven feet for about 30 seconds, you know, and, and um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of a fun thing in the end when you start seeing him, you know, use all over the place. So you'll see that kind of stuff. Um, and I pin those. Um, I also try to grab the shots that have been used uh, for um, the, the Valley View that I don't usually post on my website because I try to keep my website to things that are actually concert related. So there's a lot of stuff that when I shoot raves or, um, and you can thank Florida for this one. Florida came up with the idea of having a rave and then covering all the people in paint. And they used to call it the Day Glow Paint Party. Um, now it's just called Life in Color. <laughs> So imagine a room <laughs> I full started of, that, by the way. Someone, someone in Miami did or Florida did because it's all like, oh, yeah, it's from Miami. It's big, you know, San Diego, we're as far as you can get away. But so, so really what happens is that they just um, play dance music for four, five, six, seven straight hours. The kids jam in wearing all white, and then every hour, like on the hour, they spray them down with paint. So, so when you see, like, these really crazy people. <laughs> of course people, they do. Yeah, because, you know, nothing That's beats. 
being covered in paint while you're listening to the same music for five or six hours. And honestly, I, I can't tell the difference between, you know, hour one or hour six. I mean, to me, it all, it's the same beat over and over and over again. I, I tune it all out. So they do that in the very beginning. And they, they, they start off with a little bit of paint, and then at like 11 o'clock, it's like more paint, and then at midnight, it's a lot of paint, and then it like tapers down to like 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm well, home so by then. <laughs> I'm looking at your, your, um, your Pinterest for, uh, page. If you want to go over there and screen sure. share with us, Alan, um, you have one on there, your concert photography. Right. So we're, but yeah. just, you know, wh whichever ones that that you really well, like and want to share. I love that Alan's here because we kind of converted you, didn't we? Yeah, you, you, you did a lot of that. And hey, the thing about this, guys, we did it without chocolate. Because I didn't yeah. know you were eating it. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Okay, now my computer's going all crazy. And... Yeah. I can screen share if you want. You want me to yeah, well, will you do that for me? Because somehow, um, every time I need to do something important, my Wacom tablet goes on its mind of its own, and it's now just dragging things around my screen. It's you know random. what, though? It's not just you. Honestly, it's hysterical right before this show starts. <laughs> I don't know how many of these we've done now, and it is always oh, like, something, is something it going to happen? happen? And it's like... But any other day, you're in here doing nothing, and it's all fine. Here we go. Where do you want me to go? All right. Um, let's, let's do the... Uh, well, I can't even see it because my screen's... Hold on. There we go. Um, if we go to the My Concert Photos, that's, that's the one I've been... Um, you know, oh. that, I, that are all mine. Uh, these are images that I actually have been pinning from my own website. Um, and it was one of the reasons I wanted to do it was to start putting my images in places other than my website because there's people who don't know who I am, there's people who don't go there and some of these get repinned and then they find my website. So it was a way to to try to get people back to actually looking at um, you know, my work uh, where I wanted them to look at it. Sure. Um, and, and, yeah, so <laughs> shooting Rush was a trip because it's one of those things, we get three songs, a um, couple of minutes and then we're out uh, of the photo pit. So I'll, I'll just go through this for a minute. They, they lead us in right before the band's about to take the stage and then we get three songs and then two very very large security guys um, escort us very fast out of the building. Um, literally all the way out of the building. <laughs> so then we go outside, we pack up our gear and because I work for the building a lot of times I have a ticket and I can leave my camera, I can lock it up in security and I can go back in and watch the rest of the show. Um, right. with, with Rush, um, they wanted us to shoot the first three songs of the second set. So we actually got to watch the whole first set, and then we got to shoot the second set, and then, then we left, um, which was really good because I got to actually see what they were doing before, before having to shoot it. A lot of times we go in blind, and the first little bit is trying to figure out what's going on. With Rush, it was great. We actually saw what they were going to do and were able to you know, figure out where they were going to go. Alan, I have a question. Did they, explain sure. to you their, did they explain to you their reasoning for wanting to do it that way? Was it that those particular songs maybe had better lighting or um, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah, you know what, we were too. No, they don't usually give us, I mean, for certain things it makes sense. When we shot American Idol, it was the last three songs of the, t of the show because that's the only ones where the um, guy who won comes out and sings. So they make everyone sit through, you know, the, fir <laughs> the first three hours of the show till they bring out the guy who wins and he sings the last three songs, so we got to shoot the last three songs. So um, now what I thought, what kind of lens are you usually using for this? Like, I, you only have like maybe a couple minutes. You know, you have one choice of one lens. Oh, I like that. I have I have two choices of lenses because I usually carry two camera bodies. So, oh, okay. I, um, and I I'm I'm really the guy who likes the the long lenses. So I actually have it sitting on my desk because I'm cleaning it up for a show for tomorrow night. The 70 to 200 2.8 lens is like my ult This is like my baby. I I I would be lost without it. I would shoot. Every show I could with this lens and this lens alone. Um, that wow. would be that would be my favorite lens of all time. Now it's like a two thousand dollar lens. It's not a cheap, you know, little, um, you know, lens. But I've had this one for probably eight or nine years, and it's lasted the whole time, and it still works great. And so that's my favorite lens. And if I go down from there, it's the twenty four to seventy two point eight. So I can go from twenty four to two hundred with two lenses and two bodies, and usually that's enough. 
I mean, the reality is that once you do it long enough, you can usually nail everything you need for the client in about the first song. And then the second song is making sure you get it, and the third song is like gravy. You can start playing around and getting extra stuff. Um, I tend to shoot further from the sides and not right up front, which is why I'm invisible <laughs> to Calibra a lot of the times, because <laughs> I tend to shoot off to the side. I like, if you, if you look at that shot right there from the Black Keys, that is the perfect sh description of where I shoot from. Because, That's awesome. Because I'm off to the side so that I've got the separation between the mouth and the microphone, I've got the whole guitar, and I'm not in front of him. So if people are trying to look at him, they're not having to look through me. And a, lot, a long time ago, I was told by a publicist, don't get between the band and the fans. So in other words, if they paid for the stuff, you didn't stay on your side of, you know, stay away, stay low, stay hidden, stay unobtrusive. So I wear all black. I try to stay in the corners. When there's a break between songs, I try to go off a little bit further to the side so that I don't get seen. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because for, for on my side of it, I mean, I understand for the fan side, if you're not in the way, blah, blah, blah. But, um, well, two things. I'd go back to the Rush thing. And the first thing I thought of when you, when you said they did that, and, of course, you know, I don't, I don't know why they did. But for me personally, I actually would love that. Now, we only do one set. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know why? Because I thought that would be so awesome because you'd be warmed up. You'd be really comfortable. You know, your, your voice would be more really you'd, – you'd feel more confident. You'd be more – you know, you'd be interacting more you'd feel with proud the people. More. You'd feel everything. Yeah. I just yeah. think, to me, I I would think that's you know great. And and the thing I would say to you about um, you know not being seen, it's just and I can't speak for everybody, but you'd be surprised um, how shy a lot of people on stage actually are. You know, um, or how camera shy at least. So for me. Oh. If I'm doing something and then I catch somebody like really focused in on me, you know, especially with a big lens, it just freaks me right out. And <laughs> wherever my head was and whatever, you know, emotion I was trying to get across is completely lost because now all I'm thinking about is that there's a giant camera lens aimed at me. <laughs> it's a good point. The, the, the problem is that a lot of musicians back in the 70s were um, – and I heard this from a publicist. We were talking. She was a publicist on tour with a, with someone who's actually still out and touring, but is um is a very big name. First name is Rod. Last name you know rhymes with Ewart. Uh, and he was going through the pictures from the show from the night before in the hotel room the next morning, and was really disliked a lot of the shots taken later on in the show because. Uh, he was sweating a little more. There was a little, you know, it, it, it didn't look as fresh and as clean. And so it was basically like, I only want them around for the first couple because I don't want the, you know, the sweat stains. I don't want the hair to be drooping. I don't want, you know, right. this look. And so I've heard, I've heard that story from a publicist. I've also heard that um, actually uh, Neil Pert from Rush uh, doesn't like the photographers. And he was one of the ones who originally came up with the three songs and then your out rule. Um, really? Yeah, I, I mean, there's no way to actually nail it down because it seems well, to have, like feels like he's Neil Pert looking like he doesn't <laughs> like the photographers. <laughs> I think you're onto something there, Alan. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He's 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 a little intense. He um he missed the uh, he wasn't around for the meet and greet or the uh, press shot that I did earlier. So um, my only shots of him were from behind the drum kit, and he's a very intense looking human being. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> now, do you do a lot of these shows by yourself, like, like as a freelance, or do you normally, like, work as a, with a company, or? I, I work for myself, but I'm the house photographer for the building. So I'm actually hired per event for every event for the, uh, for the building. Um, and uh, they pay me per event. They had a, a really bad experience with a previous photographer who was there for 20-something years. That, that's actually a guy from Slipknot. He scared me, too. <laughs> uh, you so, know, little known fact about this guy is he's actually the same guy as Neil Peart. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him without his his mask on. He's he's actually a very nice looking guy. He'd pass you by in the street. You'd be like, I have no idea who that is. Uh, but uh, so I work I work as a venue photographer, and I've actually done that for a few venues. This is the second time I've been a house photographer for a place in San Diego. Um, I also work for a wire service, and I work for some websites. Okay, and, i got to um, stop you because I love that shot. Yeah, me too. I but, love that, Alan. <laughs> that was um, 
Actually, that was reprocessed using the new Lightroom 5 beta because I really wanted to see if I could um, use some of that new uh, vignetting type um, tools to to change that. That shot didn't have as much impact before. There was a lot of stuff going on that I couldn't get rid of in the background. Um, well, so that I, really I worked that. for me. That was great. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that was all about the microphone. He he has this really yeah. cool old style microphone and really knows how to like use it as a as an instrument as opposed to just standing there. So. Um, but again, I try to make sure I wasn't directly in front of him. I was trying to work from the side and, uh, right. you know, get more, more of his face in. Um, and right now, I think that band is called Incubus, and I cannot remember his name. Brandon something. Yeah, I was going to say, it's I don't actually Brandon know who Boyd. he is. Yeah. Yeah. He, has, he just had a great look, and it was, you know, I'm very attracted to it. And um, that's sometimes a problem for me because I will get, like, fixated <laughs> On a, on a person on the stage, and I'll end up shooting them all night and forgetting about the, you know, the other people, um, which is kind of not good. And Neil Peart well, does you know, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I think you probably don't spend a whole lot of time in front of Neil Peart. <laughs> well, no. Uh, it was kind of cool that his drum kit actually rotated. He had two different drum kits set up. One was in front and one was behind, and then halfway through the song, the kid actually turned to another kid, and he like moves in the middle of it. So it was oh, kind of yeah. interesting. You turn around, and suddenly it's like, oh, that's a different drum kit. I don't know how he did that. Um, <laughs> well, that do you magic. Usually, do you usually shoot available light, or do you have a flash? Or no, no flash. Sorry, there's there's never a flash. I'm I'm like the anti Joe McNally. Um, he has 700 flashes. I have like three, and they never come with me. But do they like you? Do most concert concert photographer like photographers bring flash? Because no, we're not allowed to. The bands actually um, most of yeah. them, 99% of the bands I've shot, it's no flash ever at all for any reason. And if you actually put a flash on your camera, most of the times the uh, publicist or the person controlling the pit will either pull you out of it or make you take it off really fast. Um, the, the classic concert rules. The are, yeah, the classic <laughs> concert rules is three songs, no flash. That's the you'll you'll hear that a lot. Um, I'm looking through these. Yeah, none of these were taken with a flash. Mm. This is cool. You know, uh, yeah, Billy Idol is fantastic to shoot for a guy who's in his fifties. He puts on the best show ever, and I'm I'm pretty happy because they're going back out on tour in two weeks. Awesome. So. Uh, I will be hopefully shooting them on May the twenty fourth. It's so going to be a very interesting day. So. You were you did a a post. Um, <clears throat> I guess it was a blog post, but also you had you know talked about it on on G plus. Um, you know you were putting some photos out there, trying to put your your portfolio together, and you know trying to choose from one. <laughs> You know, and I tell you, you you put these two up, and and it was of the same band, and you were trying to get it down to just one photo of e of each band. And right. golly, I was so torn. I'm like, how are they going to do this? Because I loved both of those, but you know, it was interesting what you said that, and maybe it's just at this point in your career, career, Alan. I don't know, but you know, um, it's not all necessarily you're not looking at your portfolio photos for who they are, but you know, do you like the the concert? photography aspect of it, you know, the shot. Right. I have enough photographs. I think at last count when I was sucking them into Lightroom just to see what their catalog could handle, I think I have 379,000 concert images from the oh last couple of years. So, um, and I've shot, I mean, I've shot really big name bands. Working for the venue, I've shot Rush, I've shot The Who, um, I've shot The Black Keys, I've shot Rihanna, I've shot Alicia Keys. I mean, I've shot really big names, and this is all in the last six months. So, a lot of times it's not about who I'm shooting anymore. I'm trying to find shots that actually just just really have an impact. I mean, and the problem is that, and I was, I was having a long discussion uh, actually with Brad Moore about this recently, and, and he's had a look at the portfolio stuff too. Well, Brad shoots um, concert stuff now too, does he not? Yeah, he does, yeah. and that's, that's one of the reasons we were talking about it. It's, it's really hard because I have an emotional attachment to every single image that I shot, and I've been doing a series on my website um, about building my portfolio and trying to go through step by step and, and come across it. And a lot of times I look at a shot and my brain goes back. So that's, that's Roger Waters up on the screen right now. That was like my all time, I never slept the night before that show. I was so nervous to shoot The Wall. It, it's The Wall. It's Pink Floyd's, I, I grew up with that album. I know every word to every song on that album. I'm getting to shoot Roger Waters 
in my venue the smallest production of the wall that is put on. It was the it was the most intimate venue that he played that that show at on the entire tour. Mm. I didn't sleep. I mean, I literally had three cameras hanging off of me because I was so scared I wasn't going to be able to capture something. And at the end, the, the overwhelming choices. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, now that shot, technically I had to stand over here. No one cares about that anymore. No one cares about what I had to go to to get that shot. What they care of, is it a good shot or not? And so I'm looking at all thousand pictures I took in the four songs we got to shoot Roger Waters, and I'm trying to narrow down to one. And um, I did. It wasn't that one. I liked that one, but it wasn't, it wasn't that one. I actually... Um, it's. Is it on? Is it this one? Uh, no, I love I love that shot because I in my head I can hear the British accent going, "Hey, you laddie," you know, and I, I I remember that shot. No, it's him standing in front of the wall. It's either it's probably I, in the other. He reminds me very much in this photo for some reason of D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. <laughs> like they. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, know, I can never oh look at. Oh my god! Um, I know. If you go to if you go to the board of um, probably my. Images used elsewhere. It'll it's probably That's a repan, where I am. but oh, I think I am. Yeah, photos used. Um, yeah, maybe it's. Or somewhere. is there an elsewhere? Is this There's one? my concert photos. It might be under that one. I, I can't believe that. Has anyone ever used your photos without permission? Oh, yeah, all the time. Um, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I'm using two of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it happens uh, on a on a continual basis. Um, you know, though, I hope that th those pe that anyone that's you know wanting to become a concert photographer and and they see your stuff and and you know, Alan, what I think of of your photography. I just think it's awesome and just you as a person. So you as a person, along with your photography, that's just like a huge huge uh, win. But. Um, I hope that they, you know, when they're looking at your photography and they can see, you know, how good it is and the quality of it, um, but then also understand that you got those photos without being, you know, in their faces or were able to do it kind of like laid back a bit, you know, it wasn't, you know, that that, that will give them some inspiration, <laughs> you know, to, to do that, to be able uh, to, to get those shots. Well, you know, the, the thing is that a lot of times... Um, I'm actually looking for the shot I was talking about as uh, I know where it is. I just can't seem to find it. Um, a lot of times I, I would I would love to be able to tell people what to do, but there was no place to act to actually um, do that. There was no there was no concert class, there was no, you know way to tell people what's going on. There was no there was there was nothing about that anywhere. I mean, the whole uh, um, Photoshop world being able to you know teach there. The, and when I wrote the concert photography book, was starting to like kind of share that because I learned most of the stuff the hard way. I mean, and I talk about that in my class. The reason people should listen to me is that I pretty much made every mistake you can make, and I continue to make all the mistakes you can make, and the rest of it. And I I found out what in the end works and what doesn't work. And um, I have photographer friends who are really successful shooting very, very close, right in front of the performers with a very wide lens, and they get a very distinctive look, and they really like it, and some performers have no problem with it, and they play to that kind of camera, and they play to that kind of situation. That's not my style, so it doesn't, it doesn't really work for me. Um, a lot of times, there's a, a, a trust between the photographer and the subject, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, oh, that's one of the rays. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> this is know, how Alan's house last summer. <laughs> this is Jason's house. <laughs> it's Steve Aoki, uh, I believe. Um, yeah, he, he went from that to throwing cake at people. Uh, it was very, very <laughs> odd. <laughs> well, and at they, least they, it's a cake, you know. I get cake. that. Uh, it's cake. Let them eat cake. Is, is this Paul Stanley with his son? No, well, he actually played with his son that night, but that's Paul Stanley and that's Billy Morrison over on the other guitar. Ah. Um, and I, I, I'll repent from. Yeah, well, Billy is a, um, he's a, he's the rhythm guitar player for Billy Idol, and I met him a couple of years ago. So I shot these shows, but they were at a bar in L.A., uh, literally the, the, the Roxy, and uh, they had the most incredible variety of musicians come and play in this bar with them. And I was a huge Kiss fan growing up, so. Like sure. being three feet away from Paul Stanley and having like sweat on me, I was like, oh my god, that's Paul Stanley's sweat on my lens. I have to keep it there forever. 
um, <laughs> I, when I was a, when I was well a kid, I guess I went to see um, Peter Chris, the the drummer right. from Kiss, play in a really tiny venue. And the only reason I was going to the venue was to see this girl Flo, who was a cocktail waitress there, who I had the hots for in the worst way. And I really didn't know it was Peter Chris's band, and we found out when we were there. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool, but we're going to just keep playing pool. <laughs> so we're, like, playing pool, and I'm flirting with the cocktail waitress, and life is good, and, you know, she was nowhere near the concert. We're in a different part of the, like, building. So I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm hanging out here, which made her happy because I'm not paying attention to Peter Chris and paying attention to her. So win-win. She gets real busy. I sneak away. I go to listen to a song. It's him doing Beth, and he <laughs> sings in a stool. Oh, my God. Floor. I make it all the way to the front of the stage. I'm, I'm like 19 years old. I'm like, I'll fight you to go to the front of the stage. <laughs> I've been playing pool the whole time. Now I'm here. I'm getting one song. Move over. I get to the front of the stage, and instead of saying, I'm always somewhere else, you're always there alone, he says, I'm always, insert expletive, <laughs> beep, 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 and you're always there alone. And after he says that, he high fives me. Hits me on the ground and high fives me. And I smile and I high five Peter Chris and I drink my drink and I shake my head and I walk away. <laughs> I walked away. I didn't even listen to the rest of the song because all I could think was that did not just happen. That's, <laughs> and, if, that's, and if that could happen tonight. You know, this explains a lot, Jason. Yeah, yeah. And, but this is the clincher. And if that could happen tonight, and this is why I left immediately, maybe there's a chance for me and flow. And I went right back to the pool game. That's like your Courtney Cox moment. Yeah. <laughs> if you uh, if you go back to the boards and you go to um, my concert photos, the um, there should be a new one. You put one in. Yeah. So it goes to the top. Yeah. Let me refresh it. Hey, there it is. is. So so that became my my favorite shot from Roger Waters. Because it's the only one that I got that had the whole wall being built behind him in it. Uh. Um, so it showed him, it showed the wall, it showed everything. It's actually a canvas print on the wall above my above my desk. It's up here. It's one of those things, which I thought was really cool until now when I'm working really late and I look up. He's kind of looking down at me, and it's very disconcerting at like three in the morning <laughs> when I'm working on a book to send me look up. And, yeah, it kind of freaks me out, but. <laughs> Again, we had like it was like the craziest rules. We got to shoot the first like four songs, but because he had kids coming out to sing, like in song three we had to move to the side, and then like song four we could like go back. It was like the weirdest set of rules, and you know we're just sitting there, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's Roger Waters!" and you know shooting, and it was it was definitely one of one of the highlights. But um, again, as you can see from the shot, I was staying off to the side. I I don't shoot in the middle. I don't shoot up front. I try to stay quiet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I and have a, I love that about you. <laughs> I have a furry visitor. Well, I think I think the really weird thing is I watched some behaviors and, and when when Scott DeUsa, who teaches the concert precon with me at, at Photoshop World, when we started, we had never actually shot a show together. We'd actually never met. We spent a lot of hours on the on the on the phone. We had you know, we'd done a lot of screen sharing, we knew each other's work. We'd never actually met and we hadn't actually ever shot a show together. So we went into this class and we started telling people the way we do stuff and we recommend they do stuff and since then we've actually worked together and shot a show and it's been a lot of fun but um, we turned out we had kind of the same ethic, the same way to work stuff and we thought we'd had everything covered. We thought we'd seen, between the two of us, we thought we'd seen like everything ever and every <laughs> single year we do this we see something and the two of us get together after and we make notes. Okay, we need to address the fact that you should not wave your hands above your head trying to get the uh, lead singer's attention while you're shooting. <laughs> oh my god, and you know what? That actually happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Cleaver comes to us after and she goes, did you see the guy in the back doing this? And we're like, no, but we'll make a note of that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the next class. We're like, and something not to do is don't wave your hands at the performer. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it was like, not just like, hi, how are you doing? It was like, literally like, you know, something big is going on over here. You look this way. Look this. And I did look that way, but I was looking like, what? <laughs> and then when you look, it's like this weird face, like, what's going on over there? I'm confused. No, that's, that's the other side of it. I don't show anyone the pictures I hate. Uh, I mean, I don't. I mean, a lot of people will post a lot of photographs, and they post like, like, bloop, here they are, and they just kind of throw them all up there and 
you know, good or bad or indifferent, I'm really, really critical about the images I put up. I, I am always assuming that the person in the photo is going to see the photo, even though a lot of times the big artists, they don't, but I always assume they're going to, and I always assume that I need to be like, would I be willing to walk up to them, you know, with my iPad or like with a photo and go, I took this, this is how I think you look the best. And once you start doing that, a lot of pictures are suddenly like, ooh, I don't like that shadow. Oh, I don't like, you know, that's not good. Oh, I, you know, and, and suddenly it, it becomes a much more uh, critical process. I mean, I love all my pictures, but I'm certainly not going to show one to someone who I think they don't look good in it. So. Um, right. And then it also, you know, you might have to shoot that person a lot, like 14 times he shot us and there's like <laughs> two good shots. It's not Alan's no, fault. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, the, the very first, you didn't even, you didn't even partake in the pre-conference the first couple of times. You, no, you were like, no, I'm no. not going to do it. That's so the bad, very, I'm like, I'm not going to do it. The very first time that we did it, um, one of the very first frames I got was of Scott playing his guitar, which he still uses as his avatar for a lot of stuff. By the way, I'm looking at the canvas print of it right now. Right. If so, it were on his desk, I would give it away tonight. <laughs> but it's not. It's across the room. I have one of those somewhere, too. Um, <laughs> the, the, but the fact is that once I got that shot of him, I never really... Like, I was like, I'm really happy with it. I'm good. I don't need to try to get another shot. I don't need to try to recreate that shot. I've already got it. Right. Um, right. You know, once I got that shot of you a couple of years ago, I'm like, okay, I'm really happy with that. I don't need to try to recreate that one either. You know, and yeah, I'll try to look for something a little that's different. That's still my favorite. That's still my favorite. I, I like the double hands from this time, but that's, you know, the double signature. <laughs> double <remember that's>, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's hysterical. So yeah, they they pointed out in the classroom that you know I guess each artist has a signature move, and I guess I have one. I was not aware of it, but now that I am aware, of it, I'm completely freaked out. <laughs> so now I'm trying to do it differently. So now it's double-handed. <laughs> anyway, Alan, these photos are amazing, and I honestly could sit here and look at them all night long. But we have people watching that expect to eat chocolate. I. I we and, assume so. And so we must, we, must, we must give them that. So what we're going to do, though, is we are going to, um, first off, if you, if you haven't followed Alan on Pinterest, well, I'm sure you're going to do it now. You don't really need me to tell you that, but you have to do it because his photos are amazing. Um, also on Google Plus if you're, if you're there. Um, he's got some really interesting posts. But, but the other thing is what we're going to do is we'll <clears throat> go ahead and do a round of pin it or spin it. Tonight's going to be a um, concert photography-themed pins. So <clears throat> everybody's going to head over to Pinterest, and for 90 seconds, you'll pin. Don't worry. I will play music for 90 seconds or something close to that. <laughs> Just pin while the music's playing and stop when the music stops. Um, and what we'll do tonight is we'll let Alan kind of be the last one to vote, pin it or spin it. So, so um, you don't have to say why you would spin it, Alan. Let's just, we're just going to say pin it or spin it. And... Um, if, if Alan agrees it's a pennant, then we can eat extra chocolate. <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, Alan, I, I expect you to like a lot of these, okay? <laughs> so, uh, everybody at home, go ahead and get over to your Pinterest and um, go ahead and put in the search, you know, concert photography or however it is that you want to search for it. And um, and we'll start uh, we'll start pinning away there. And I guess I should do that. You know, it's really bad when I'm in charge of making stuff go where it's supposed to because I'm not even paying attention. Anyway, so everybody head over to Pinterest. Jason, are you gonna are you gonna pin screen share pin? I'm gonna screen share pin. I think I'm gonna stay in screen share mode. Oh, that's cool, Jason. Yeah, do that. Yeah, okay. You yeah, you know why? Because I'm really tired of, like, I'll go back and look at this, and it's me looking like a goober listening to this music. And I'm getting kind of tired of that. So Should I, I not think... be looking at things that I'm going to pin? Well, on? now, I, kinda, I don't know if I want to watch Jason pin or, like, pin no, myself. You have I to wanna, pin. I want to know, like, why you don't pin so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to watch the report. You know what? I think it's because Jason is looking at the photography. I get Could so be. attached to all of them. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, everybody, and 
Alan, are you able to play? I am. All right. Okay, get ready, everybody, because this music is, well, it's music. <laughs> I would like to thank Kevin McLeod from Incompetent <laughs> because he's twisted. All right, ready? Everybody home, ready. get ready. You're at Pinterest. You're going to pin for 90 seconds. Why am I on there? Okay. Remind me, I have something to Alan's I want to show you guys. So All right, uh -oh. ready? And action. <laughs> <laughs> it's not playing. What the heck? Wait, no music? No well, theme song? It's supposed to be music. What's happening? All right, and sing something, and I'll start the timer. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, hey, wait. Band, have you, Alan? It was Aerosmith. Grab them, Jason. I don't know which one. Steven Tyler. This part's for you, Alan. <laughs> right? That's awesome. So far, Alan, I like I like your stuff much more than anyone else I've seen. <laughs> well, thank you. There's I found some really good ones though. Like I'm trying to look and I'm like, you know what, I'll see people. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, you guys aren't gonna be able to hear this awesome music if you keep that up. Here comes the best part. No, Kendra, stop acting up. Oh, that's a good one of Steven Tyler there. It's all purple. <laughs> Somebody's texting me. Don't they know I'm doing something? <laughs> Stop texting me. Hey, did right, you know you're on the show? Like, not play that music. You think it's been 90 seconds? No. It hasn't. Okay, but your time's about over. I think it's... I think it's Scott. <laughs> I told what? you it was probably Scott texting you. Going that music is old. Oh, Doesn't he know that. that the music goes down when he does that? Right there, that whole little xylophone thing, that's the best part. Yeah, it is. Right? Okay, time's up, everybody. Ready and stop. Damn, I was and so I'm, close to one of the best ones. <sighs> okay, and can I tell you the last couple times we've done this, it's totally been like musical chairs music because I really have no idea how long it's going. We just stop whenever I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Anna, were you pinning? Yes. All right. Well, we're not going to start with you, though, Anna. We're going to start with Alan because we want to know – what Alan is pinning, don't we? Sure. Okay, I so want to know what I'm pinning too. <laughs> so here's the deal. If you can, can you screen share, Alan? I'm gonna try. If you can do it, okay. If you can do it, then um, go ahead and uh, you just three, and then we'll we'll vote pin it or spin it. And That's if it's a exactly. unanimous pin it, everybody at home, you get to eat chocolate. Or if you hear pin it, you get to eat chocolate. This is the or, longest I've had to wait to eat chocolate. I think I might have to put this back in the freezer. Well, no, that's like <laughs> pin it. Oh, I heard. You hear it? Oh, look at this. All Ooh, right. Wait a second. Hold on. Now, okay. Alan. What so you, you got to pick three of them, Alan. Well, the, um, <laughs> there's three that I really like because I like this Tina Turner one. Um, because it reminds me of uh, the bad Beyonce pictures that are showing up now. Yes. We'll go ahead so, and click on it to enlarge it. I just did. Yeah. 
By the way, Tina Turner is awesome. I totally pin that. Yep. Um, but it's, it's it's a it's a great it's a great moment, and she doesn't care that she might be an eighth of an ounce overweight. She's got good muscle, and it's just a hell of a moment. So someone really mm -hmm. nailed the shot, and um, nowadays, if you would have taken that picture, you'd probably be banned because she doesn't look at her very 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 best, even though I think she does. So. So there's a lot of that happening, right, Alan? A, there's, a lot yeah, of controversy Beyonce, about that. Yeah, Beyonce just banned all pro photographers from her concerts because unflattering pictures were released. So, um, wow. So I really, I really like that one. Um, so that's the first one. And then there is nothing more iconic than than the shot. This is Angus Young from ACDC. I mean, that is just pure rock and roll. Oh yeah, he's uh, the man. I wish I would have been able to take that. That would have been like, I, this is a shot that I that I look at and I'm like, damn it, I will never be able to take that. I wish I could take that. That moment is past. Um, but damn, that's a great shot. Um, rock and roll wise. And uh, since I can only pick one other one. Okay, well wait, hold on, pin it. Right. You're pinning it, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. dare you to not pin that, right? <laughs> It's really hard because Alan has such great taste. Well, yeah. But everybody's happy because we're eating chocolate. Alan is eating cheese, but it starts with the ch sound, so we're going to let it go. <laughs> and then uh, my third shot is, um, is, is, again, the same kind of raw god pose that was so prevalent back in that 70s and 80s. And this is Jimmy Page. Um, and it just doesn't get more iconic than that two guitar neck raised up above the long hair, the look down, you know, and, and everyone be like, oh, you can't see his face or you can't see the drum set. It, it, it's just like that is rock and roll. You know. So, right. Yeah, him. Absolutely. You know. Um, totally. You know, pin it, and, pin it, uh, pin it. Pin that all day. We don't even have to ask you, Alan, because obviously you pin it. You did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ramble on. <clears throat> And, and as a bonus, I think this one's really funny because it's Billy Idol way back when. Wow, he looks in that like <laughs> nothing happened, nothing changed. Right, it's kind of kind of scary. That's probably thirty years ago, and he still looks very similar, and he still has the same attitude. A few more wrinkles and a few more lines, but on stage he's exactly the same as he ever was. So I really thought that was kind of neat because I've only got to see <laughs> him in the later years. So. Yeah. Right. Well, what's funny is when some of them come back, like some of them do it longer, and they um, and they change their look, you know. And so, but some of them don't. They like they're just older, and they look exactly the same. Well, I will say, if anyone ever gets a chance to go see Billy Idol, and you like that music back in the '80s, you should go because it's pretty much the same show, and he does the same hits, and he puts every single ounce of energy he has into that stage show. He he That's really awesome. puts it out there. Um, I. I met him in person a couple of times, and he's like a really quiet, kind of shy guy. And he goes out on stage, and out comes this rebel rocker. And he just, <laughs> he has this persona that is unbelievably energetic on stage. So um, if anyone ever yeah, gets a does. chance to do that. He just has that way of speaking to someone, I think. Because I've seen him in a few movies. Like, he makes little cameos, and I'm just like, yeah. hey. <laughs> She's all like, oh, whatever that is, Anna. <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. Okay, Anna. <laughs> okay. Then, let's see your your three pins. Okay. What's that over there? Somebody said pin it. Pin it. What's up? Okay, it's Prince. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be out of trouble. Okay, oh, but Prince. I have this thing with like. Is film, he Prince again film. though? Wait a minute. Wasn't he somebody else for a while? <laughs> he was dollar sign Kaching. <laughs> so I love this photo of Prince. I had to think of what, okay, so what concert photography <laughs> that I've seen that is, is so a lot of its color, right? which is great, but then um, I was told by a nature photographer that sometimes if you put something black and white, the most important things pop out the most. Yeah. So I love this. I thought it was cool. It is very cool. I would totally uh, Yeah. It. Sorry, I was reading something. Yeah. I like this too. I love photos of yeah. like the fans. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pin and, it. Sorry, I'm like reading funny things. I thought this was a really cool angle. Oh, it <laughs> is. Like, that was a concert. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's cool. What was it? I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pin it. All right. 
Jason, you're Some also of the quiet. I'm in. Yeah, all three of those are good. Um, I, I, I always. The man who like you know is concert photography god. What do you think? I, I like I like all three of those. I, I always forget to turn around and take pictures of the audience. I I mean to. I plan on it. I think about it, and then I forget. It's my brain is like focused on the stage. I forget that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on behind me. But like, okay, so Alan, my question is, when you're taking photos, aren't you like in a pit or somewhere where you're not with the fans? Like you can't get I'm, those back views. I'm usually in front of the fans um, in the in the photo pit. I usually don't get to to be anywhere I want in the in the venue. Um, if that's for me, I'm in the shower. Right. No, it's <laughs> it's a. <laughs> Jason's doing who, his hair. I don't even know who calls on the home line anymore with cell phones these days. But uh, what happens is most of the time we're standing in front of the fans. So they come in and there's that barrier, that photo pit. And it can be really big, it can be really small. But we get to like hang out in that whole area. And a lot, a lot of times it annoys the fans because they've been waiting there for like six hours, you know, waiting for their favorite performer to come on. And we just kind of waltz right in and get, you know, to do whatever we want. Um, when I shoot for the venue now and I'm doing those raves or like the all day kind of events, they love the pictures behind the fans um, of, of the, you know, like the crowd silhouetted against the stage lighting. Um, <laughs> well, especially because, if they're all painted. Well, yeah, because they, they, it's, use, it's very useful for promotional materials. It makes the venue look big. I have to change my mindset about what I'm shooting depending on who I'm shooting for. So if I'm shooting for the building, I try really hard to make sure I get more of those wide angles and make sure I get things that the, that the venue actually can use. When I'm shooting for a band, I tend to try to get really narrow and just try to get the, the artists. And it was kind of eye-opening because as I'm working through this new portfolio project, I'm realizing that the pictures that really all stand out to me are all single people playing something. Not even like two people. It's like just like it's, it's Roger Waters or it's... Um, you know, Getty Lee from Rush. I don't even have the whole band. I just like a picture just of him or just of Alex or just of Neil. Um, so I'm finding that I'm really tend to focus in on those things. So when I see someone who's got a wide shot like that third one you showed with that different angle, it's like, ooh, that stands out to me because it's something I don't see. I just don't see that way. Um, you know, I, I, you talk to like Jay Maisel and he sees in a certain way. He, it's ridiculous how he sees and I don't see that way, but it's kind of like he sees that way. He, in his eyes, that's that's how he looks. So when I see someone who shot something very different to the way I would have, I'm always really intrigued because I never see it. I don't. I I literally don't see that shot. I think that's like with every photographer. I know, like when I do, when I look at a really cool wedding photograph, I'm like, why did I think of that? That's genius. Like whoever whoever thought of that idea is like, and then you consciously make the effort of like trying to see differently. Yeah. At your next event. So. I'm, I'm I'm not very good at that whole seeing differently thing yet. I still kind of see the way I see, but it's worked for me. So I'm not like I'm not trying to. I've I've figured out that I have a style. Finding out that you have a style and what your style is is really difficult. Because a lot of people go, "What do you you know? What's your style?" Oh, I'm an environmental you know portrait guy. But but what's your style? Well, well I, the problem I, with that is is that people start off and they oftentimes don't look within; they look without. So they look at everyone around them and they try to emulate them instead of simply just looking at the world through their own eyes right. without concern. You, you know, you, your concern has to be to show it, to show it the world or whatever you're photographing, right, to everyone else. But you have to want to do it in your own way. If, as soon as you want to start to do it like the next guy, even if you nail it 100%, even if you do it better than that guy, it's still not really yours. You just made a photo that's that guy's photo. You know what I mean? It's like building, oh, it's like building a Ferrari out of a Fiero, and you can make it look perfect. You know, that going down the road, you'd never tell that wasn't a Ferrari. It's not a Ferrari. It don't right. look Well, I learned that the hard way. I, I went to a, a photo thing in San Diego about uh, eight years ago or so, and I was actually at a pretty down point. I was really not happy with the way I was shooting and the way I was doing stuff. And there was this um, photographer, uh, this Joe McNally guy, and he, he shows up <laughs> with a camera and he literally hands out three flashes to audience members and has them stand up. And this is when Nikon SB800 came out. And the next thing you know, he's got this ballerina like leaping across the stage and he's in the middle of the room and he turns around and kapoom and he takes a shot and these three flashes go off and, you know, comes up on the screen. It's like, 
holy crap, that was amazing. Anyone can do that. He made it look so easy. So, you know, off I went and I bought a second flash and I got a model and I went out and I'm like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> I leave my flashes in a box now and we'll stick to concert photography. And I, <laughs> I, I went to, I went and to I, Joe McNally, speaking of Joe, I went to one of his <laughs> seminars and it's like, you know, eight hours of full learning, you know, I went, went to um, one of them and I'm just like, you're right. He's looking like, wow, he explains it so easy. I can do this. I can do this. You go home, you're like, what is? What am I doing? I don't. What did he say it was? <laughs> How do I hold it here? Where's my assistant? Where's Bray? Like, you're like looking for someone. I, I, I've, I've honestly, I've seen Joe present. <clears throat> I can't even tell you how many times. I mean, from San Diego, like doing one day seminars to Photoshop World to other stuff he's done to watch him on Kelby training and I, I see it all and it makes perfect sense and I can understand the math and I can understand how they work and then I try to build the scene but he sees light differently than I see light see I, I'm actually very lazy I, I work in a field where I don't have any control over the light so I don't have to worry about it I work where I don't have any control over where I get to stand so I don't get to worry about it and I work where I don't get to shoot all night so I don't worry about it so they've literally taken away a lot of my choices now I'm narrowed down to three songs or 15 minutes from this narrow area with, with these lights and I just have to make the best of it which is kinda lazy I don't have to do a whole lot of work <laughs> well I mean well, but, I don't know you I think you could look at that two different ways you know because you, it's, it's, you it's, have to be a, a lot more focused about what you're after and after, you know what I'm saying I, I don't think it makes you lazy but I, I think it might make you a really good photographer yeah. it's not it's not easy <laughs> it's, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's easy because I've seen people <clears throat> not do well I mean I, and I, I try to everyone I've ever met I've tried to help them you know but it, it's it's not um, what I'm saying is there's I don't have a lot of variables that I have to actually deal with myself I don't have to think about the lighting as in how I would change it because I don't get to change it. So I get to concentrate really, really closely on nailing my exposures first, and then I can spend the rest of the time just dealing with the composition, which is how I get to take 300,000 concert pictures in the last couple of years and narrow that down to 25 that all have the similar style to them. It's, you know, that's, right. that's kind of well, how it works. I think that's great sometimes, you know, I think it's great that sometimes your ch choices are taken away from you because then you can focus on what's important. And I, I love that you have so much emotion in your, in your work because now you can watch for that. You can wait for that moment where, right. you know, Calibra looks back at Scott and no one else sees that, but you do, you know? The part part yeah, of that is, that I mean, and, and I'll bring it back to Pinterest for just for a minute. I started to use it after having a conversation with Jason when they started giving the secret boards. So what I do is before I'm going to shoot somebody that I've never shot before, I go find all the pictures that have been taken from them recently and I post it to a little secret board because I don't need everyone to know that I suddenly have a mad thing for Rihanna or, you know, something, you know, it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> but now you've told us. Well, I mean, it's, but this is what I do for all the things. So I can, I actually look at, especially bands I've never shot or don't know. I shoot a lot of bands I don't even listen to. So I have no idea what they look like or who they are or I'm doing an all-day festival. And I used to just make little notes and keep them, you know, like on my website or something, but they were really hard to access. So now I find on my iPhone, I can just go to the board and suddenly I have all this information about how everything is going to look right before the show, especially if I'm doing like four or five acts in a single day. Then I can know wow. which band is which. And I keep oh, most, that's an awesome tip for concert photographers on well, how to use Pinterest. It's that, wow. It's, I, what I do is I try to be as prepared as possible. So um, uh, Alicia Keys and Rihanna both just played at my venue. And um, we found out the day of the Alicia Keys show that we were shooting from the soundboard. So I couldn't get a long lens um, sent to me. I was completely like at the mercy of whatever was going on. It turned out to be just a, a really horrible experience um, for me because I wasn't happy with what I, with my preparation. I couldn't prepare for it. So right after that, I knew Rihanna was coming two weeks later, and I immediately started looking at what was going on on her shows, found out that all the pictures I was looking at looked the same, which means to me they're all taken from the same angle, from the same spot. And suddenly I'm like, it's probably a soundboard shoot. I got a hold of uh, Nikon Professional Services. I got my lens sent to me. I made sure that I had uh, something to stand on because we're going to be at the soundboard. And the, the images, I, I, I really love them. I was really happy with it because I went in with this complete, like, different mindset. I had all my gear. I was ready. I was prepared. Everything was checked. You know, we only have three songs or 15 minutes. That's really not a lot of time. And especially when I'm working for the venue, 
they want a picture for the wall. They, they expect me to come out of there with an iconic shot of the artist to print 22 feet by 12 feet and goes up on a, on a wall. So, In my opinion, your job is 10 times harder than the average editorial photographer who gets 15 minutes usually with the CEO or one person they're doing an interview with. That's 15 minutes with one person in a situation where normally you can go in, set up lights, stands, whatever you like, test all afternoon, have the person come in, pop, 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 turn them around to another set right behind it, pop, pop, pop. What you're doing is you're showing up, you have to photograph sometimes one, sometimes one, sometimes three, sometimes eight, sometimes right how many people in a band with constant changing light sources Mm -hmm. With other people pushing up against you, I mean, it's like it's like you're in the trenches of a war and trying to document it and make everyone look perfect doing it. It's 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 an amazing, it's an amazing, oh, amazing genre of photography. Don't forget the beer. We we the best <laughs> the best complaint I ever had was someone who said it's not a real world concept shoot class at Photoshop World because no one's spilling beer on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like that can be arranged, but I'm you know I'm not really sure they're gonna go for us walking around behind people and dumping beer on top of their heads. But I mean, <laughs> the the it's the simple fact is I love music. I love going to concerts. I am absolutely inept when it comes to musical instruments. And the, the line is I can barely keep the stereo in tune. I'm I'm just I've had people try. They're like, no, I can teach you how to play guitar. Turns out you can't. I've had friends who are musicians who have been like, no, it's really easy. No, it's not. I, I, I'm never going to be on stage playing an instrument, but I really love that whole rock and roll vibe. I love going to concerts. I love, you know, being there. So I just did something that, you know, I loved as well. I started photographing friends in bars, and it just kind of went from there. So to me, I, that doesn't seem tough anymore. The tougher parts now are dealing with publicists and dealing with, you know, some of the weirder restrictions that you get and dealing with some of the facts that if... And honestly, it comes down to most professionals. If you have a plumber come to your house or you take your car to a mechanic, you are trusting them to do the job you're hiring them to do, which seems simple. Like you, you get a plumber, it's like, please fix the toilet, and they fix the toilet, and then you don't tell them how to do it. Most times in my job now, someone decides that they can tell me how to do my job, but they've never done my job. And the bands and the, and the things that work best is when they go, you're a professional, we trust you to do this professionally, and we'll let you do it. And then at the end, they get really good results, and they're really happy. And that's why the relationship I have right now with the venue work at, has worked out so well, because they're like, we want you to do it this, this, this way. And I was like, you know what? Trust me. Let me just do it the way I do it, and you'll be happy with the results. And, and it's been a great relationship with them doing that. And a lot of the bands that I work one-on-one -on -one with, it's like, let me just trust me. I will never get in your way. I will never, you won't even notice me but you'll get what you want out of the thing when it's done. And hey, if you need someone to vouch for you for that, like if you need like something written, okay? I've never seen him. <laughs> or, I'm not sure it is Alan because I've never seen him. I, okay, so, but let me just say this. Alan, honest to goodness, I swear I could sit here and listen to you talk about this all night because I think it's fascinating. Um, and we're going to talk about it some more. But chocolate. I know, no, that... Um, well, Jason and I are going to give up our pins because we're just eating chocolate now anyway. <laughs> but we really, we're all sitting here in anticipation of Anna's do-it-yourself. Um, she is our do-it-yourself MacGyver. And um, we definitely need to... Uh, are we in anticipation I, of my projects? Is it kind of fire? It, it's because it's because you came up with a use for duct tape that I had never seen before in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan, I love duct tape concerts. He's seen it all. Okay. All right, by the way, on. by the way, pin it in case you haven't had chocolate in a while. And and at some point, guys, everyone at home, you know, honestly, it once the pin it and spin it's over, it's just a chocolate free for all. You don't need permission anymore. Okay, so I don't know if you want me to start or not. So Okay, I do want you to start, Anna, but i got to tell you, I'm just a little bit concerned because, you know, you and I have had this patch since day one that you would not use fire. Oh, uh, cause it, are you it, sure? it worries me. Because I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to, okay, I want to start a fire next, next Pinterest show, for, you know, with, with an orange, so... <sighs> I'm getting more risky. I'm getting more risky, you know, because last show we did something that was what scary. I forgot what we did. 
Yeah, I know, but you know, when you get that scissors, so scary. It, all, it, it worries me, and now you want to do something fire. Well, we'll talk about that some more. But go ahead, because I'm very um, excited about your project today. Okay. So let's see it. Let me find it first. Okay, so first let me give you guys a background story. I have this thing where I, I like to watch um, Soul Pancake's channel, um, very into the uh, philosophical aspect of Soul, Soul Pancake. And I listen it? to the song. It's called Soul Pancake. It's, a, it's a, actually a book. Oh, and okay. they have a YouTube it's channel. For it's for hippies, Calibra. It is not for hippies. <laughs> anyway, long story short, they have this show on their channel called My Last Days, and it's about the last one they posted was about this um, this 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 seventeen year old named Zach, and he wrote this song called Clouds. And so I was listening to a song, and somehow between like. TED Talks and like entrepreneurs, you know, like my other educational like movies and this song, YouTube suggested I look at this video called How to Make Clouds in a Bottle. <laughs> of course. So I, I pinned the, the YouTube video to my Do It Yourself board. It will actually be on the Do It Yourself on the Spot or on the Spot Do It Yourself. So what you'll need for this project is a water bottle. They use a two-liter bottle. I only have a little one. I had Carrie go get one, you know, with a spout on top. Anna, <clears throat> if this thing winds up looking like a squid. Uh, hey, it's the, the jellyfish is still alive. Oh, that's or, right. It was a jellyfish. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> okay. It's a science experiment. Okay. So you put a little bit of water in the bottom. And you close the cap, and it's supposed to like immediately like start to have high humidity. And you just squeeze the bottle like so. It has high humidity just because there's water in it. Yeah, water. And if you squeeze, apparently, okay, it's very scientific. If you if you condense, oh, I'm sure it is. Anna. Okay, anyway, you can watch the video. Anyway, okay. so squeeze it to increase the temperature. Like this or so. All right, now, now it's got we're water in it and you squeeze it. It's all sorts. You have of matches, <laughs> a candle, and something to light your your stuff. On. I they said they use skewers. I only have toothpicks. I mean, that's 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 what's gonna happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a second. You have fire this time. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> Somebody keep nine one one on the phone. <laughs> okay, you ready? You know, started doing pressure into your water bottle. You squeeze it back and forth, a little bit of water. And you open the top. Hold on, I gotta light something on fire. Yeah. I have chocolate all over me, by okay. the way. Alright, ready? You're gonna blow it out. And you're gonna get a little smoke, and you're gonna try. Oh no, it's stuck! Oh, for God's sakes. Anna. <laughs> Ow! Okay, can I just. I just want to. <clears throat> I have no idea. Okay, we're just going to do this. We're going to do this. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I just want to there say, okay. do not try right, this at home. <laughs> I'm making a cloud. It's working. There's not gasoline in that thing, right? <laughs> it's working? It's working. Okay, I don't even see it. Do you see, do you see it? Do you see a little bit of cloud? I see a ghost. Oh, just, no. just say yes. <laughs> I'll turn the lights off now. I see Mary. <laughs> Let's leave. We're going to have to shrine it off. I totally see it. Do you see it? I totally see it. Yeah, Anna, we're off the air. Anna. Anna. And stop squeezing the bottle. It's totally there. I just can't show you. Look. It's a clown. <laughs> you see it? You see it? I had a date like that. <laughs> it's totally there. I just can't show you. <laughs> oh, it's right there. I totally see it. Okay, okay. You ready? I'm so excited. We're out. What are we looking at, Anna? Okay, okay, ready? 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 Do you see it? It's oh do you see it? It's it's blurry. It's a is it's it's smoke, right? You can't it's a cloud. see it. You can kinda of see it. It's humidity. It's a cloud. I just made a cloud in a bottle. <laughs> uh -huh. That dun da da dun. Earlier I did pee. Hey, you've got a good drum roll. We need a splash. That's really cool. So, I just made a cloud. Okay, Anna, uh, that is cool, by the way, and well done you. 
Could you go over the um, the list of items that is required for this cloud project at home? Sorry, I was so excited. I was laughing because I like the casualty. I can't help it. All the gadgets and Anna teaching a class and say, "Kids, tomorrow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to bring your plastic bottle. I'll have matches for each of you. But you have to bring your own plastic bottle." Okay, just let, me, just let me say, before you give us the list of items again, um, do not do this at home. But I just but, did it at home. Yeah. Yeah, not you, but and whoever else. else might try it. I mean, if you do it at home, do it on someone else's advice, <laughs> not ours. So all you need is water, a water bottle, and, and a match. Yeah. That's Amazing. And you and you can show that like, you can you can make clouds. Can we go to commercial? Is this, is this... <laughs> wait, uh, wait, dude, yeah. I am so excited. I made a Don't clown. the bottle. <laughs> Anna, is 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 the is the squeezing it's critical to yes. making the cloud. Well, okay, because when you squeeze, you're pushing um your molecules together, like your Pushing your atoms up together. You're creating a high pressure and a low pressure system within the bottle. There you go. Within the bottle. In the northeast section of the Bravo. bottle, there'll be precipitation. Further down south, we're going to have a building of heat. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Okay, the YouTube video. Sounded good. Okay. Yeah, so bravo. That's that's awesome. A cloud in a bottle. I'm going to catch, catch things on fire. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that a police song? No, I'm so excited! I found this video that you can you can start a fire with an orange. Okay, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much chocolate, honey. We're gonna have to talk because we we talked about fire, and and I was already very nervous. Okay, but hey, that's awesome. Cloud in a bottle, way better than ship in a bottle. Squeeze the bottle, people. Very important. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Anna, very much. You're yeah, always so brave. And there was legit cloud. I just had glare. I couldn't show you the cloud in the bottle. That's yeah, going to so be the next Saturday wondering. Night Live. Cloud in a bottle instead of a black <laughs> box. <laughs> and we got to see how it, the cloud got in the bottle. And this, the squeezing is the important thing. Okay. If, if, if we have learned nothing else this week, I think we should stop talking about clouds of all kinds. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Yes. Clouds. Okay, moving right along then. So, Jason, let's hear uh, your. We're, we're so far out of time, and we used to have a time, a length yeah. of time that we did this, but apparently nobody. We, we don't care about that anymore. Yeah, it's um, basically between an hour and whenever the hell we sit free. <laughs> Listen, if you've got to go to bed, go to bed. You know, you can watch it later. Not any of you guys. Those That's people at all. <laughs> Okay, so Jason, let's let's um, let's move on to your uh, tips and your celebrity. All right, let's do it. Um, so let's see. Do I have us? I think this is all right. So my first tip is um, how to pin things simply by a keyboard shortcut. <gasps> yeah, and it's really, really, it's really, really cool, and it's really excitable, but. I feel kind of bad because it's only for Google Chrome users. So if you don't use Chrome, I sort of don't have a tip for you this week. Uh, and that's only because my other tip fell through after I did a little further testing with it. I found out that it didn't work as well, and I didn't want to pass it off to anyone. But this one's really, really good. And if you don't have Chrome, um, this might be a cool reason to use it if you're a Pinterest addict. So up here, I've got a Chrome extension. It's called Shareholic for Pinterest. And the reason I use this one is each website you go to, it shows a number here, and it tells you that something was pinned from here. This was pinned three times. So I can go to any website right now, and this number will change, and it'll tell me how many times things have been pinned from that website. It's really kind of insightful. Um, hmm. Yeah, so that's why I use this one. So I'll give you the link to that. Once you get it installed, it sits up here. Now, you don't even have to show it. You can right-click it and you can hide the button if you want to just click in here and it'll hide but we're not going to do that the tip is that when you go into your settings it, and um, we want to find the extensions that we're using um, actually it doesn't even matter we just want to go into settings so we'll just go down to settings 
Nope, I'm wrong. Extensions. And extensions here on the left hand side. You can get to it either way. And if you go all the way down to the bottom of the page, you're going to see keyboard shortcuts. So when you click keyboard shortcuts, you, you're going to have a list for all of the extensions you have added, and I've got a few of them. Um, it's really pretty simple. You want to find the one that is Shareholic. Here it is for Pinterest. And I just set mine to be Alt and P. You can set yours to be whatever you like it to be, but Alt and P. And if you're thinking, no, that does print, no, that's Control P is print. So you're safe, Alt P. And now, whenever I'm on a site, if we look up for, oh, I don't know what for microphones because it's a rock and roll show, right? And we'll go to images and microphones. <laughs> Let's just say this wouldn't be the perfect way to test anything. And Where'd my internet go? Whoa. Okay. So if I wanted to pin something, I would just hit Alt-P and all of a sudden that's what I get. I get my complete selection of wow. where to choose from, and I can pin right from there. That's all I did. I just hit Alt-P, and the dialog pops right up. Super simple, so you, you can pin anything from anywhere, YouTube, whatever you like. So that's my tip. That's and an it, awesome tip. Yeah, it really it actually works for anything else that you want to use um, any other extensions, almost all extensions. Um, so yeah, you can make keyboard shortcuts for your Chrome extensions, and it can really simplify a lot of things. Um, give you the link for that. And my celebrity today is, nope. Although I saved this guy's website because I wanted to turn everyone on to him, uh, James Forbes. He's an art director, and um, he, while he's got very few boards, he's got some really nicely put together boards. They're just. And, and I think you can tell just looking at this, like, everything on this page seems to kind of fit. You can almost tell almost all of it um, looks like it came from the same person with the same style of taste, so it really interested me. And he's turns out he's a pretty cool guy. I talked to him on Facebook. Um, our celebrity, Ashley Tisdale from, um, uh, what's the Disney show? The he's Sweet like the Light. Sweet Life, yeah, with Zach and, and Cole. And uh, I think uh, High School Musical. Yes. I think exactly. it is High School Musical. And I think like Sharpay takes New York or something like that. I only know this because I watch <laughs> Disney shows. Don't judge me. Well, no, I'm not judging. Hey, I watch a bunch of them too, but. <laughs> she's, got a very, she's got a very rock and roll style, actually. If you go through her stuff, um, she's got a pretty shabby chic kind of rock and roll style. So she's a good fit for the she does, show. yeah. And um, this is her closet. <coughs> and, <gasps> right? Legitimately? Yeah, and I think... Look I think, at the shoes, people. I think she's a closet pinner, and you know why I think that? Because she sits at her Mac in her closet and pins from the closet, so she's a closet pinner. So she turns around and goes, wait a second, I own those shoes. Let me pin them to my closet. Yeah. Oh, I thought, my God. I thought you girls would that. Is that is... Whoa. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, I just sit here. I put crazy. my makeup on, and I, you know, I talk crazy. fake Good. on with my girlfriends. And what should I wear? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I could just kind of see the whole thing. You know, I know, but you know what? And she has this, like, obviously a very good professional shot of herself up above herself or where she's yeah. sitting. Mm -hmm. That would, I don't know. That would, I, I don't think I could do that. I think I, I would yeah, have a little hard time a little, like staring at a photo of myself. You know yeah. what? Because I would be sitting there critiquing it the whole time. Like, oh my God. <laughs> what you happened to my hair? That, if you have photos of yourself in your home ravine. Is, is that what they say? I don't know. I mean. I, don't think, I mean, I think if it was with your family or, you know. Well, I have photos of myself in my house that, that other people have gifted me. Like, they yeah. have printed it out and gave it to me, but no, I've never I, printed anything for myself. But, I, but just, no, I wasn't saying there was anything wrong with having that photo of yourself, but, you know, for me to be sitting there staring at a photo of myself would not be a good time for me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Pictures of her shoes. Would not and, be a time for me. And she just seemed Oh, cool. my gosh. Her dad built her house, so she puts yeah. in like little, little things about who she is and what she does, and that's... So that was cool. And she's got good style. She's got really cool yeah, style. She does. She does. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was a good guys, one. 
I've got a second one this week for the guys. Ooh. Andrew Zimmerman, our favorite foodie, is on <laughs> as well. And he, again, he doesn't pin much, but it's quality, not quantity. Exactly. That's cool. All. A, a good follow, and I and I've asked everyone to to put their um, their Pinterest uh, links into the comments section, and you guys are making some great comments um, that I'm reading. So it, it's it's nice that you're putting there because in that way we can all have new people to follow and and um, and check out your stuff. That sounds weird though, doesn't it? We do have new people to follow and check out your stuff. That's so creepy. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. Those were awesome shares. And the tip was great. And I do use Chrome every once in a while. So I'll, I'll use put it. the link in the chat just now. Okay. So um, then I'm going to, I'll do this quick and so everybody can get out of here. But um, let me pull this up. In keeping with the theme. Let me get back here. We've got four viewers who are watching from China. Really? Uh, maybe. <laughs> China's a big place. I'm guessing hoping we have at least one. Yeah, that would be nice, right? Okay. So, you can't have a rock and roll show without going to Vegas. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing. And we might as well start here because you, um, you could go to Vegas and, uh, you know, and get married by Elvis. Which, <laughs> you know, why not? <laughs> so, there's that. You could even and, get uh, married by Elvis. <laughs> I, I've actually been to a Vegas wedding. Have you really? I, I have, yep. And was it fun? Yeah. <laughs> so it was a weekend in Vegas <laughs> with a with a wedding ceremony thrown in the middle somewhere. Oh um, my god. So anyway, I was just gonna show you a few of the hotels. Um I mean, you know, there's there's just crazy, you know, talk about finding you can just go crazy luxury in, in Las Vegas, right? I mean this is a pool at Caesar's Palace, which I've never been around, but that's that's awesome. Um this is Seriously, Jason, look at this. this is a bathroom in a suite in Caesar's I, house. My, and my if you ever had this suite, is, I want to know who you are. <laughs> my, my bathroom is the same, but the tones are cooler. It's more like a neutral marble. <laughs> yeah. I say, that looks like awesome. my room at Photoshop World. <clears throat> now, this um, is such a cool shot. Um, I love all the Cirque, you know, Cirque shows. I think I've seen almost all of them. I don't know if I really have. But they're just the coolest things. I mean, just the, who thinks of this stuff? I mean, look at these costumes. And I, I shot one of those shows. Um, oh, did you really? Yeah, not in Vegas, but it came to San Diego, and they played at the, um, at the building. And uh, we got to shoot the first four little scenes um, from as far away as they could make us shoot from. Wow. Um, but they actually ended up being some of my favorite shots. And some of them are pinned somewhere on my board. They've, they've put on an amazing show. Um, so. Well, I've been trying to get the, um, the Photoshop guys, you know, to, at a keynote at Photoshop World to drop down on the bungee things forever. <laughs> maybe, Matt, maybe Matt and Corey. Um. They won't do it. They won't do it. They're chicken. So, um, but I'm still working on them. Okay, so if you've never been to Las Vegas, this is actually, this is also, at Sun and Caesar's Palace, the casino, but this is the shopping area. It's called the Forums, right? <clears throat> and that's, that's a shopping area. That's nuts. But here's the, getting back to some of the shows, because that's, that's honestly, for me, the main thing I like about Vegas are the shows. And I think the, the Cirque shows, I mean, you're just like, you, just if you want to get your mind blown, honestly, that's, that's all you. That's all you can say. You can't. You can't make sense of what's happening. It's just like complete overload. But this this one was one of my favorites, and I don't think it's one of the the biggest shows. But I have seen this one. It's um, it's Le Rev <clears throat> or Le Reve. I don't know how to say it, but that's a really really good one. Um, this is Ka, and it has this. I don't know how tall this is, but it's like a moving monolith on the stage, and they're literally crawling all around it as it happens. It's like 
crazy. Um, this Lighting is, directors for these shows are, are amazing. Right. I think. I think the, the people that come in and they, you know, they, they plan the lights for these shows and concerts too, you know. <clears> I think it's just absolutely amazing. This is, I, I guess, the hall going into the love show. And this show, they use all of, it's all Beatles music. And I'll have to be honest with you. I mean, I like the Beatles. I'm not like, you know, super fan of the Beatles. Um, so the first time I thought about going to the show, I was like, oh, it's the Beatles, okay, you know, there's a few that I really like or whatever, but, and this is going to sound strange, but it is such an amazingly beautiful show. I almost like cried three times, I'm not even kidding you, to Beatles song, but just the way they performed around the music, it's really, really incredible. So um, there's lots of those different shows. There's all kinds of suites, and so that's something I really wanted to see at the hotels. You know, what are some of these suites? And 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 obviously, this is amazing. It's a penthouse suite in the Hard Rock Hotel, right? Which is crazy, but you know, I know it's Vegas, and everything's supposed to be over the top and gaudy. But at this point, I think we can not design the suites like a leisure suit, Larry suite. You know what I'm saying? There's just one thing wrong with that room. I mean, you drop your black card in that room, you're not going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, that's an amazing room, right? And then this one um, is at the Sky, Las Vegas. And who gets these rooms? I want to know who gets these rooms. Alan, is it you? Uh, no, because I usually spend about seven and a half minutes in my room in Vegas at any given trip. So, um, right. Well, I look, this even... is cozy. I mean, you could live there. But let me show you the one that I'll never get you guys because I don't even want to even know how much this thing costs. But they really look at this suite. Hello, at the Mandarin Oriental. Check that view out. But also, I love how that was decorated. It literally Not looks sweet. like it looks like Trey Radcliffe decorated an apart uh, an apartment in the city. I <laughs> see. Maybe we should look close. At the, at the mandolin? At the mandolin? No, I've never stayed there. Mm -mm. I had a I had a wedding couple who stayed there, and they said that uh, I don't know about the I don't know if they got the suite or not, but they said that the service was so good. It was like ninja service. Like you never saw a house a housemaid. You never saw a house nothing. Like maybe she, they were concert photographers. <laughs> maybe she said she said she was legitimately like. We would leave, and the concierge would say, you know, goodbye, Mr. and Mrs., and then they would come back, and everything would be, like, perfect. Wow. I, like, they never saw anything. Awesome. No room service, no nothing. Like, they would ring, and then they would get a door knock, and then that was it. And then there would be, like, a tray of food. I had a girlfriend like wow. that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she left, it was perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's really... <laughs> I don't know what so they got amazing rooms. Obviously, here's the Paris um, Hotel, and and I mean, if you've never been to Las Vegas, I I know everybody's probably seen pictures of it from here and there and everywhere. But I mean, there's really no place else that is quite over the top like Vegas. But in it really, it's you like it when you're there. At least it seems right. You know, it makes sense. But, Las Vegas um, is perfect for like four days. And, Alan, and and then exactly. past four days, four it's, days. it suddenly becomes like this, like this crazy thing now. Um, I actually like Las Vegas for very short periods of time, and because it's really close to where I live, I mean, I'm in San Diego, so it's a $50 plane ride there and back. I mean, it's, oh, it's crazy cool. cheap to get to Vegas. So I've shot a bunch of shows there at the um, House of Blues in Las Vegas and, in, and um, at the college. And uh, the, the worst one was, though, there's no way to actually tell time in Vegas. Uh, once you're inside and you're in a casino, or inside the buildings, you have no idea what the actual time is. So yeah, because they won't put them up. They don't want you to no. know how long you've been there, right? So we were in we were in Las Vegas, and uh, my wife and I got with a bunch of friends. And we were in Las like, Vegas once, for three <laughs> <days>. <laughs> right? Well, we we were there. We were we were there for like two days, and um, the second night we went to this concert, and everyone kind of went back to crash. And I like to play blackjack a little bit, so I was playing blackjack, and I went up the room, and I go to the bathroom, and there's this wristwatch on the counter and I look at the time and I realize that our plane is leaving in an hour and a half. 
Oh my so gosh. I run in the room and I, I grab my wife and, and one of the other friends was traveling with us and I rush them out of the room and we run through the casino and we get down to the, the bus and we get on the bus, we go to the hotel, I mean to the airport and we get to the airport and we're sitting there and it's an hour earlier than I thought it was because the <laughs> wristwatch belonged to someone who was still set to Utah time which was an <laughs> Ahead of Vegas time, which is the same as California time, and everyone's looking at me like, "Okay, great. Now we're in the airport for another hour. <laughs> you know, now you have to feed us. Now you have to." <laughs> I was like, oh. "Folks at home, that's why we're over tonight. We're on Utah time, right? Oh, it's all no Utah kidding. time. So it's only six o'clock here. I don't know what you people are worried about." Yeah. Well, so this is the Bellagio and um, Bellagio, and they have the most amazing fountain. And there's a documentary on this actually that I've watched because I'll watch a documentary on anything. But um, the the cannon power, the firepower that makes these things happen. What do they shoot up like? I don't know, thirty stories or some crazy amount. These things are incredibly high. Of course, you can't you don't you can't tell that from this photo, but. Even if you don't stay at the Bellagio, you definitely want to go and see that that show. Now, I um, it would be really bad if I did not mention my favorite place is Max Brenner's in the Forum <laughs> Shops in Caesar's Palace. And we all know that I love Max Brenner's every time that I can. We all gather there, lots of us on G+, wherever they are. But if Max Brenner is watching, they seriously need, because you can't find great, their stuff is so good. It looks so good. The presentation's so nice when you're eating it, and it's just fabulous. And they have all these really creative ways, the way that they, you know, present it and prepare it, and the, the chocolate is wonderful. Um, but you just can't find good photography. I have like a chocolate board and I want to put Max Brenner's stuff on there so bad. But most of the photography for them, it's like when people went there and they got something and they took a shot of it. And um, I, I can't pin that. But um, I want to pin Max Brenner's stuff. But like this was the, they call this a hug mug, which is so cute. But because you, you hold it like that when you, when you drink the chocolate. But Max Brenner needs to get a really awesome food photographer and get some great shots of their great stuff. <laughs> if, if only we knew any food photographers. <laughs> yeah, I can recommend somebody. Max Brenner, seriously. But, uh, they, but their stuff is so good and when I, when I see it, I want, I want to see it like I know that it is. And I just, I have the hardest time finding great pens for Max Brenner and it's, it's, it's breaking my heart. Okay, maybe, enough of that. Maybe you should take some photos and then just link, you know, no, to the. Not me. I'm not trying to get a job here because, I, you, Alan, you think you're lazy. I mean, I have an iPhone, and if I had to put an all oak clip on it, you know, that's too much for me. So, um, <laughs> but this is what it looks like in there. And we actually did have a dinner there. So there's all kinds of great shopping, great shows, incredible sweets. If you were to ever get one, <laughs> and if you do, <laughs> let me know. I want to see it. Um, so yeah, Las Vegas is definitely the um, rock and roll home, and they even have a Hard Rock um, uh, hotel that I did, that I didn't get to. So there you go. That's our rock and roll show, but we do have to give um, give away some some prizes. And I think at the last uh, last time I checked, it was Stacy Tuggle that yeah, thirty seven. Thirty seven. That. Dang. I got 22, Crazy. so two people got me this time. Yeah, right? So, um, so Stacy, I have this, uh, I, have, I have bunches of stuff, but, oh, let me stop screen sharing. <laughs> Hold on. I, now I don't know where I'm at. What am I doing? Where am I at? What's going on? Advertising oh. creative cloud. <laughs> oh, God. Don't mention the cloud. Okay. And um, hold on one second. Clap. I can't stop doing it. Something's happened. Uh, my thing's been taken over. Okay. There we go. All right. So here we go. Stacy Tuggle, how about this? This is right off of Scott's desk. Actually, it was, it was back here, so he may have been reading it. Oh. <laughs> but I moved it to this desk, so I could say it was on the desk. Um, anyway, it's Brian Peterson's whoops, exposure... Solutions, and you can't hear it, Stacy. But there is a crowd cheering uh, for that. So 
There you go. And then also, um, let's see. We, do we need to give something out to someone else? Who was the first person to... Um, what's going on here? Can, are you, I'm not still screen sharing, am I? Okay. Definitely um, me. <laughs> I don't know what the question is, but it was me. It was you? No, I was going to see who was the first person um, to put their... Oh, it was Robin Michelini. She was the first oh. person to put their Pinterest address. So, Robin, I'm going to give you a choice, and you will put in the comment section of what you want. I do have an olive clip right here, because we always have those. Okay, and then, hold on a second. Oh, that's another olo clip. You know what? One's black, one's white, if that matters to you. You can have that. And then also in here, you know, these are the small gifts. We're not going to get this, but it's a bamboo stylus. Could have that. And then I had, oh, where'd it go? I had, um, I saw Steve Coleman today. He's one of our friends on G+. I believe he's watching tonight. And he gave me this to give away if anybody's in, if you're interested in that. Uh, introducing WordPress. Now that sounds fascinating, but I don't know if you want. So, do we have any other reasons to give gifts away? Because I have them. I have lots of stuff. Anybody think of a reason? Anything? <laughs> mm -hmm. Nothing? You got Anna, nothing. Anna didn't burn the house down. <laughs> <laughs> Who's excited Anna didn't burn the house I, I'm actually going to add something because I was looking through some of the boards and um, Robin Michelini's board is freaking cool. Every one of those images is like I, I want to have taken it or repin it. So, <laughs> Seriously? Um, those yeah, on the, just, the, the link she provided? Right. Because she's got 12 pins here and I'm just, it's like I'm like damn. Especially the shot of um, the Dead Sarah on the on the the tour launch um, from the Warp Tour because I've shot that band and it's like oh my god she was she just got like this epic shot of her leaping in the air above the amps it's just amazing. All right, um, so we're going to give Robin two prizes. I'm actually going to add this. <gasps> prizes, prizes from Alan Hess. Yep, I'm going to throw in one of my books that's sitting on my desk. Um, it's a Ooh. book on night and low light photography that I wrote like a year ago. So it's sitting here. She just needs to send me a message through G+, and I will get that off to her as well. Hey, so thank you, like Alan. A, that is like an awesome picture. I'm now going to steal it. I'm going to <laughs> copy it. I'm going to find the fan. I'm going to track them down, and I'm going to try to shoot them again. So. Pin it. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, there you go. That's what you get, uh, Robin, for uh, – hey, and now we've got – we've not only taken this stuff off of Scott's desk, we're now taking it off the guest desk. Right. I think but, but, I'm, but on this side, not the camera side. <laughs> I mean, eventually, we could give away my rose-tinted glasses, but then I can't tell when I'm looking through the world in rose-tinted glasses. No, you want to keep those, Anna. And we want you to keep those. Do I look very smart I, in my rose-tinted glasses? I thought you had rose-tinted contacts, so you always saw the world in, you know. That's how the world sees Anna. <laughs> All right, so congratulations to our winners, Stacy and uh, Robin Michelini. And uh, Robin, just let me know out of all those wonderful things that I showed. And then you're getting that that uh, Alan's book, which yeah. is awesome. Big hand to Al to Alan for like setting the bar for future mm. guests. I mean, there it is. For real, <laughs> you cannot right. come on the show now without bearing gifts. You it's, know what I'm saying? <laughs> knock with your feet, like the Italians used to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody at home, we're so far over. I swear we're going to get back to an hour show. But it's not our fault. It's Alan's fault. It's my because fault. Because he just had a lot of things that we wanted to see. He had a lot of stuff we wanted to hear. So it's not us. It's Alan. And it's, so it's still daytime here. Right? <laughs> it's still daytime here. I know. We're all falling asleep. All right, everybody. Thank you at home. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anna, Jason, and everybody at home. Bye. See you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.